Hi, I'm Daniel from Midsummer House. I've been here for 12 years. We're now we currently hold two Michelin stars and uh, I employ about 17 staff. To be honest with you, I'd still say we're based in France, but with a lot of Asian influence and Spanish influence. We're here at Midsummer House to uh, do a dish for you. The dish is going to be roasted calamari with cuttlefish, bavette of beef and chickweed with a miso vinaigrette. Um, with Scott, who's my senior Sue. Basically, Scott helps run the kitchen. This is the cuttlefish. So basically, I'm just going to chop it up, like roughly chop it now. Basically, uh, scraped all the outer skin off it. We've uh, deboned it and we've given it a thorough good washing. Now I'm just chopping it up. This is going to go into the robo. And it's going to get blended for about six minutes. And to be honest with you, we're trying to create our own identity, really. We're not trying to copy anyone else. It's about enjoyment and I still love to be at the stoves. So that goes into the robo. While that's blending, this is the squid ink. It's coming, we, we buy it in jars, but I prefer to break it down into uh, smaller bags so it doesn't go off so quickly. What I'm looking for is a complete contrast to the dish. So the cuttlefish is blended to break it down. Now we're adding the, uh, now I've added the squid. So now it's been blended, now I've got the nice job of passing it. Basically, I'm just gonna push that through the mesh. As you can see, there's still quite some lumps in it, but you're never going to break that right down. The way the food's evolved, we've changed the way the kitchen's set up. But the, the, the food structure is still based around what, what I was trained on 15 years ago. You've got to be in the kitchen to live it. You've got to be in the kitchen to be creative. There's no, you can't be creative from a desk. But well, basically, the vinaigrette Scott's just about to make is a miso vinaigrette. It's quite, uh, it's very clean. It's to cut through the, the, the beef, it's to cut through the calamari, and it's there. It's a background flavour, it's, it's not an intense, it's got lemon juice in it, it's got lime juice in it, it's got miso in it, it's got walnut, walnut, oil, walnut oil and a little bit of honey. What Scott brings to the party, he's got a fantastic palate but also he's a calming influence on the whole brigade. With the food side of things, he's brought in some new influences. This just brings the whole dish together and it makes it a bit more richer. Yeah, it's great. Right, so Scott, if you go and get the, the, uh, the chickweed, right. I'll crack on with the squid and by that time we'll, uh, the dish should be coming together. I think I've never cooked for stars. What I've cooked for is, is pleasing the guests. What I have is the general public that live in Cambridge that want to eat great food. So basically now I've finished, finished passing the squid. So that's all we've got out of it. So now basically what I'm going to do is because I want this in really thin sheets, I'll take a backpack bag, a small amount in the bag. You have to use the long bags. So with my knife, I'll push it all the way down to the bottom. Push it down again. Now what we're going to do is going to run that through a pasta machine. So basically, you same way as you would a piece of pasta. It's just a bit more difficult. As you can see, it's starting to stretch it like a piece of pasta already. Right, so now, obviously because I'm going to cook it, I'm going to uh, just quickly backpack that. So now, as you can see, it's completely flat, completely sealed, ready to go. So now what you want to do is going to drop this into the water bath for four minutes at 70 degrees. Then it gets taken out and then it's time to start having some fun and putting it together. But the water bath was something that we were using in France. And it's something that I've introduced into the kitchen here. It's, it's foolproof. So now it's, it's cooked. As you can see, it's got a lovely firm texture to it. What the bavette is, it's down by the, the, the rump. It's one of the toughest pieces of meat on the animal. If you overcook it, it becomes very, very chewy. What, what we do is we break it down and then we break it down into strands like that. Yeah, this goes on the plate raw. So now I've got the squid. This is the thing is we use cuttlefish to make the actual puree and the, the pasta and then we use squid because it's, a, it's got a softer texture. So now what I'm going to do is try and cut this exactly the same diameter as uh, as I've got the beef. So basically now we should get two portions out of this. So now I'm just going to quickly measure to make sure that it fits the perfect size of the plate. Trim the ends off. I'm just going to cook, quickly cook the calamari. It's got, the pan's got to be red hot. I want a slight bit of colour on that. 
So a little bit of lemon juice is just going to, as you can see, it's still searing it. So that's the calamari. So now I've got the bavette that we picked earlier, the chickweed and the red wine vein sorrel. I still believe that commies should be able to dress on the pass, and I, I believe it's my job to teach them how to season, how to, uh, to have their right palate. And to be honest with you, I'm only as good as my weakest link, so everyone needs to be at the same speed, really. Yeah, that's the miso vinaigrette. And as I said to you earlier, for me, food's going very simple now. It's not this, you know, 25 things on a plate. The work's all done in the, the, the kitchen here. It's all, you know, pre mise en place. So that's it, that's the... Uh, Salad of cuttlefish with uh, bavet of beef and the uh, chickweed and the miso vinaigrette. Very, very simple, very elegant, but you know, it, it's a light dish and I think that's how style should be. I think it should be a light but full of flavour. You know, I think seasonality is a real importance in our industry now and it's something that everyone is getting onto, but I think it's something good chefs have been using for years. There's no point having asparagus in January. Mm -hmm.